Well, the flat season began at Nace and it is at Nace on November the 7th that it will conclude. And ahead of that last meeting at Nace this season, I have caught up with the great Dermot Wells. I suppose, Dermot, how important has it been this year in such a strange year globally and in Ireland that racing has kept people with some interest in day in, day out in, in this country? Oh, I think it was vital. Mm. I think it's, it's been essential. Uh, we're living through such strange times and uh, for people who are suffering either with the virus or who have lost loved ones. It's a big help to know that sport is there, horse racing is there, I think it's vital. And how did your yard cope with it? Because you know, you're ready to go in late March and then you're halted for three months. It was very difficult mm. it was because we didn't know when we were going to get started. And to me, that was the biggest problem. I was, I'm never the quickest to start anyway. So I was probably a little bit slower this time. But it was the unknown and not knowing when we were going to get going. It was a problem. Did you experience anything like that as a trainer before? Never. So you had to, your horse was trained to be here and then you had to, what did you do in that three months? I, mean, just, I just kept mine ticking over. Mm. And um, that's maybe one of the reasons why they're finishing our year so well and so strong. Because um, I, I wasn't doing that much with them. I was just keeping them, as I said, ticking over and waiting for the day that racing would start. And your strike rate then improved exponentially as the season went on? Ah, yeah, because we never, we never start that early. Mm. And you must remember, people forget nowadays all the big races, with the exception of the Classics and maybe Royal Ascot, are on the second part of the year. You've got the Irish Champion Stakes here at Leperstown, you've got the British Champion Stakes, you've got the Arc Weekend, you've got the Breeders' Cup. All the international races around the world are more or less in the second part of the year. Yeah, and I suppose to mention horses, search for a song, it was an extraordinary performance from the horse and from the trainer to, to get her back because it hadn't been all plain sailing between those two Comer International Irish Ledgers. No, it hasn't. <laughs> uh, she has a will of her own. Mm. She's highly talented. You told me she was claustrophobic a long time ago. Yeah, she yeah. is claustrophobic, but she's gradually getting that confidence, slowly but surely. And she's getting confidence in her own ability. And uh, you've seen it very much so in her last two runs when she won the St. Ledger for the second year running. And her excellent run the other day in ground that was way too soft for her in the British Champions stairs. How much satisfaction did you get out of that second ledger? I was delighted because Dr. Vincent O'Brien has won nine St. Ledgers and to equal what he achieved. That was very special for me. Was he an icon for you, I suppose, no more than everyone else? Oh, he was indeed. Mm. He was the most wonderful trainer. The big story of your season, arguably, might even have been Tarnawa, because that was extraordinary what she achieved. Mm. Tarnawa has been excellent. She was a tough race mare last year. Didn't reach the top, but she did win three group races for me. And like she won the Blanford. It was my fifth time, I think, to win the Blanford in concession. And this year, we purposely decided that we'd aim at the second part of the year for the reasons I gave. She started off in Cork and won her group race impressively. And of course, she's after winning those two big group ones in France and uh, the Prix Verme and uh, coming along then to win the Prix de l'Opera. And does your globe trotting still give you that as much satisfaction as it always has? Oh, it does. Mm. More. Yeah. Because the challenge is tougher every year. And, it's and this year in particular. This year in particular. Yeah. And it's lovely to see. Irish horses dominate on foreign soil. Before we talk about a, a jockey who sadly passed away, the, the, the jockeys coming through in Ireland at the moment, they seem to be a pretty good crop, it has to be said. These are the best lot of young riders I've seen in this country. You really? Know, these are the best. Mm. These are the best for many years as a, as a number. Mm. Like you have some wonderful riders from Pat himself, from Pat Smullen, Michael Canaan, you Christy Roach, it's so many talented riders. Currently you have Shane Foley and Colin Keane. But you've got, the, it's the strongest crop of young riders, as I said, from Oshin Orr coming as champion apprentice with Andy Slattery last year. And you have Mikey Sheedy, you have Dylan Brown McMonagall, you have Sam Ewing. And I'm only naming mm. four or five there, if you know what I mean. There's, there's probably a dozen top young riders in this country. And generally seem grounded individuals as well. They're excellent. Mm. We should be very proud of them. Mm. Someone we were obviously very proud of, Pat Smullen. Uh, Twelve months ago, um, it was strangely symbolic that he passed away on the anniversary of Champions Weekend because Indeed. obviously the 2019 day at the Curra, I remember talking to you that day and the emotion in your voice was quite striking and it was a day where it was an abstract in itself in terms of just the experience of being there. Yeah, no, no. Losing Pat was, was a 
a huge loss to his family and to everybody that was associated with him. Obviously a huge loss to me personally and uh, to Irish racing. You still get the impression that he's, even though he's passed, he's having an influence on people. People remember their conversations with him and you have so many memories to look back on as well. What were your favourite memories? I suppose the most, I had so many memories with him over the number of years. Like he was nine times champion jockey with me. And I suppose winning the Epsom Derby with Harold Zand mm. and coming back then a few weeks later to win the Irish Derby with two spectacular rides. Uh, they were a great combination, Harold Zand and Pat Smullen. They were both equally tough, determined, talented, brilliant. And uh, if you watch the rerun of those two races, he always had them, of course, in the right place at the right time. And that was him. That was him. Mm. He rode so many winners when he won another Irish Derby for me. On, Grey Swallow, a horse of my mother's, was a very special day. Night time when he won the Irish 1000 guineas. And then he won big races around the world as well. And I always say a race he rode for me in California, the matriarch, it's a grade one for fillies and mares. And uh, at the time it was billed as the best fillies and mares race of America that year on the turf, which it was. And he rode the most brilliant race uh, to win by two necks. And, uh, you saw his strength against the best riders of America. Mm. And we talk about that legacy on the track, but the money that was raised for cancer research, partly, in, in mm. fact, mainly because of Pat, is staggering, really. Staggering what was raised, and it's, it's a wonderful tribute to him that so much money was raised for such a wonderful cause. How are you now in terms of going into the winter and looking ahead to 2021? Are you as hungry as ever for next year? Oh, definitely, yeah. yes, indeed. We probably, this year, by design, have trained a much smaller team of horses. And it'll be the same next year. We'll, we'll have a, a tighter ship. Um, but no, no, I'm looking forward to it. We've got some very nice colts and fillies. But uh, it'll be a balanced team. Yeah, and just the quality of racing as well. I mean, it's been a busy schedule, but mm. the show has stayed on the road and we've had some great races this year, despite everything. We have indeed, but the standard in this country is the highest of any country, I think, in the world. Mm. And you just look at the success of Irish horses, not just in England, but whenever they go to France, they invariably win. Mm. And... Um, Australia today, more Irish bred horses winning all the time. Irish breeding and Irish training is at the very, very peak right at this moment. I suppose just finally to mention your old colleague John Ox as well, who'll be bound out, He's, uh, he can reflect on some great days as well. He can indeed. Again, he was a wonderful trainer and uh, a very special person. And his handling of See the Stars was superb.